Good morning. Eric and I are headed off to another adventure, one that we're very excited for. We are taking our Arctic tent out. We're taking the dogs out, sifting through this wood. We want to bring some birch this time. Wood stove in that tent is just super small and it burns through the wood fast. So we're hoping the birch helps us out. It's not super cold. Where we're headed, it's probably going to be a little colder. It's about 40 minutes away. We're going into the mountains, we're hoping to do some ptarmigan hunting and just have a nice relaxing time out there. This time of the year, we're coming out of winter, we're going into spring, so it's a little bit of a transitional stage. And we just wanna get out one last time and enjoy the weather, so we will see you out there. We made it out here to our camping spot and tell me this isn't the most beautiful camping spot in the world probably I'm gonna call it but it's freezing out here it's probably about well it's five degrees at the truck so it's probably that or colder where we're at and the sun's going down we're doing pretty good but we got the old men and the dog sled so we got to get this tent set up and we got to get the fire going it's something I've been looking forward to with this tent we haven't used it since our fall bear hunt and now it's the middle of winter and I left my pocket knife and my flashlight in it so I finally get them back and I can hold it here now. Not only does this tent have a wood stove, but Eric also brought the diesel heater, so we are going to be double as warm. I don't know how we're going to stick this thing down, but. The mountains are blue! Figure that out when we get there. Guess what, Eric? It's yeah. not supposed to be windy. <laughs> It's always windy here though. No, I know. It'll probably, it'll probably Maybe get windy we'll tie it down to our snow machines or something. Yeah, there's my pocket knife right there. Yay! Hey. We've got to get this thing heated, but I want to show you real quick what happened last time. This is like a burn right here from the wood stove and the floor. It didn't go all the way through, it just left a mark. We did have this canvas material down too. So what happened was the ground was kind of unlevel where the wood stove was. And right under the wood stove, there was like a hump. So it was really close to the wood stove. And we brought some things to hopefully fix that this time. So. What's that called again? This is this is a welding mat for welding. This. Dang, this stovepipe is cold on my hands. Little lady crank. Wow, this could fit some long pieces. Look at the blankies here. Alright, straighten that out and get it flat. Oh my gosh, so much warmer in here. It's crazy. Alright, babe. Did you see how well it's going too old. Oh, geezers that need some assisted living help. Let's put them in there. Uh, you know. Good job. Last time we were in this, we had a cot on this side as well. It was just a little tricky in here with the dogs. I think we're going to try to keep them on one cot. We had a huge dog ped right here, but it'd be kind of nice if Eric and I had a hangout spot and an area to walk to, to and fro, get outside. 
your feet hurt. Do you know why they hurt? Because it's really cold outside. <sighs> Burning my eyes. It's finally going though, right? Oh, it's, a def it's like 20 degrees warmer here already. We don't, we don't even have the door closed. My head's warm where I'm up here. Well, it's a little different using this tent in the snow because there's nowhere to pound stakes into. We're in like powder right now. I mean, there's probably at least five feet of snowpack underneath us. We're trying to make the tent bigger on the inside. We're gonna pull out the corners and we're tying them to the sleds for now. I'd like to get something tied to the back too. And hopefully it don't get too windy on us because we'll end up down there or something. It's perfect. As long as the sled holds, right? Yeah, I gotta grab- Batteries, dog food? Yeah, dog food, I gotta grab all that stuff. Okay. Isn't that insane how warm it is? It is? Like 100 degrees in like there. 10 minutes. Oh, it's cold out there. Whoa! I know. That heat literally like hits you. Holy cow. It's crazy. Well, I don't think it's been very long and it's probably in the 90s in here. So that's what's really nice about this uh, tent with the wood stove. I remember last time it's so beautiful outside, but you pretty much just want to like hang out in here because it is cooking and we are eating bagels. We're so hungry. I whipped up some bagels last night, but I cheated. So I wanted to do sourdough bagels and I used our starter. I let it go for about a day. Then I added some commercial yeast into it to help it rise quicker. So these are one day sourdough bagels. We gotta cut them up and get some butter on them. Who took a bite out of that one? We've got the skillet down with some butter. We're toasting up these bagels. Again, this wood stove is just crazy in this tent. No joke, if you're like freezing cold and you can set this tent up and you can get this wood stove going within 10 minutes you can get it extremely warm in here and it is i brought my thermometer it's 80 degrees 80.8 inside the tent and it's negative five outside of the tent so it's just it's just crazy it's honestly like too warm i'm, I'm taking clothes up and we got the uh we've got the door cracked for us another thing we are doing this time with the wood stove that we didn't do last time is this thing has a water container on the side and it's got a little spigot down there and you can get hot water so we're going to put a couple bottles of water in here and this is going to be for us for later it's also going to be for the dogs for their dinner we're going to soak it in a little bit of hot water for them this one's frozen oh they're probably thirsty i gotta get them some water you hear that that is crazy whoa oh my god i burned myself too Ow. Man. I'm like. Warm. I could be in like shorts right now. It's 90 degrees in there. It's crazy. I think we're going to head in for final for the night. We're not ptarmigan hunting until tomorrow. And we're going to keep our eyes out for the northern lights the activity has been really good this last two weeks and we have witnessed them a few times they are fairly hard to actually document so we'll see what we can do but we're gonna we're gonna look this would be a nice place to see the show it's almost a full moon too Did you see that Heat goes up, Bo. Cold water goes down. This tent, I'm telling you, it is amazing. So outside, well, first off, I, I bought a new little thermometer and it's really cool. It's got the thermometer and then it's got a little piece that you put outside so you can see your inside temperature and outside. Outside the tent is negative nine degrees. We just got back from a night ride. It didn't feel that cold, but it's pretty cold. And inside the tent, is just under 87 degrees so 
Pretty awesome how warm it is in this thing. I've taken off so many clothes. I still have like two pairs of pants on and stuff. I gotta start stripping off layers and uh, we'll probably eat some dessert and call it an early night. We're just gonna run the wood stove tonight and I think we'll save the diesel heater for tomorrow or tomorrow night. What's for dessert? We have ice cream and we also have creme brulee. I saw that. Yeah, we have creme brulee, like a freeze dried meal. I'm interested to try one of those. Well, good morning. We are cooking up breakfast and we've got some wheat coffee here that we need to make a second cup because we're gonna need a little bit more to get going after the night we had last night. You sure you don't want a mountain house? Oh, we're having bagels again? Bagels. Yes, like Arrow mentioned, it wasn't the best night of sleep last night. So the dogs slept great because they had a whole cot to themselves with dog beds, blankets, and our idea was to sleep on a single cot 
in a sleeping bag and it didn't work very well. Uh, we were both sleeping on like metal all night and it just wasn't that good. So we're gonna redo things tonight and try to sleep a little bit better. And we did forget a few things this trip so far that we know of. We forgot plates, we forgot a hatchet, and the biggest one is we forgot our snowshoes, which is very unfortunate walking around in deep snow looking for ptarmigan. So we're gonna have to just go by snow machine and hope that works for us. What's that one right there? That was the overnight low outside. It got down to negative 16 degrees and we were pretty comfortable in here as far as heat goes and Ariel packed us all that birch and it made a huge difference. When we do spruce, I literally had to get up, uh, not joking, like 12 times in a night to keep the fire going. The birch, I think I got up maybe like three or four times. That's the way to go. We gotta burn birch in this thing. Open face. Dang it. I'm not brewing this strong enough or something. That's okay, I'm only your hunting partner today. That's light roast. So. I'm not gonna lie. It honestly tastes more like water than it tastes like co coffee. It tastes like water cream. I'll drink it, but. Dang it. That's worse than the first one. I put more coffee in there. Oh, God. That hit me in the thigh. Ricochet got gotcha. you. All right, if we see one, we can get this close. I think I can get it. That's crazy. He went up that little valley right there. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, you rolled. You crashed, huh? We're gonna head out. We're gonna try our luck. It is still frigid out here. Uh, definitely below zero, and we're gonna go for a ptarmigan. We'd like to get two. I'd be happy with one, but we're gonna try to get one with the slingshot. If I can't get one with the slingshot, we brought the 20 gauge, but first thing we gotta do is we gotta find some tracks. We didn't see any last night. We didn't see on the way in, so we're gonna try a couple different areas and see if we get lucky. to the back of the valley there's a few other snow machiners out here and we are having a blast because normally i would never be able to ride on this with my machine but the snow is packed down so much that we're both able to just go all the way around here and it's really really fun haven't seen any ptarmigan tracks that's what we're after we may have to head back go past camp and look in a different area these birds don't usually congregate unless it's the winter months, which it still is right now. So we're expecting to see quite a few tracks. We found some old stuff and a few other little critters tracks. Hunting these birds is still new to us. It's a challenge. We've only been doing it for about a year. So, so we're learning and hopefully we can uh, find some today. Isn't that fun? It's like yeah. so smooth. You could go way higher too, man. You went higher than I went. You, it's easy. Yeah. Oh. But the machine. Well, I found where they started or ended, and it was just on top of that hill. All of a sudden, the tracks just appeared. Like they, they flew like they away. Flew there, or they flew there. It almost seems like the tracks are going this way, because I've seen quite a few wing marks that looks like they're going this way when they take off. There's a lot of birds, though. A lot of tracks. I mean, if we run into it, we'll see them for sure.
We've been out here for a few hours looking. We stopped by the tent once and threw some more wood on the little wood stove for the boys, but we found a lot of action. We found one valley that was extremely promising. I mean, this thing was just loaded with fresh ptarmigan tracks, and apparently they took off somewhere and we couldn't find where they landed again. So we're at a different hillside. I'm seeing more tracks that are a little older. I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna get one today. We're gonna try one more uh, valley on the way back to the tent. Uh, I'm getting pretty hungry, so we're gonna have to make something. Maybe it won't be ptarmigan though. Just got back and there's a there's been a moose out here. I don't know what happened, but it was probably like at least half a mile that way, and it followed the whole snow machine track up to this hillside. I don't know what he's doing out there. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure the dogs weren't too happy about that. We're up in pretty high elevation. We're probably about 2,000 or more. We've seen these birds as high as 4,000 feet, so we're in good country for it, but. I think we're just gonna enjoy the enjoy the rest of the day. It's spectacular out here. What was out here? Whoa. Some kindling. We came back out on another ride, semi looking for ptarmigan, but more just enjoying this beautiful spring day. And I'm gonna go for the hill. That big one right there, I think that's the steepest hill I've ever done. So I'm gonna see if I can make it to the top and then we'll see if Ariel can do it. Well, I didn't do the hill. That's okay because I flew the drone up there so I got to see what it looks like on the other side. All right, it just goes for a long time. Eric and I have been back here, but we've never been back this far. So this is a real treat and it's an absolutely spectacular day. Tomorrow is the Iditarod, the famous dog race, and it will be the fifth winter we're here, but we're not attending it. We've went all the other years. So this is a little bit of a different year for us and that's just because we've got our move coming up. I have some family visiting and we wanted to just come out here and have a nice time and even though we didn't get any birds, honestly, it's been really, really neat and I hope you guys enjoy the mountains as much as I do. Let's head back to camp and make some dinner. Oh yeah, she's going now. Thank you. 
We are having quite the treat for dinner tonight. We do all kinds of variations on this, but this is gonna be a coconut curry. So we're using coconut milk, and this was supposed to be a ptarmigan coconut curry over rice. We didn't get a ptarmigan, so it's just gonna be veggies in there, but we got some awesome veggies. In the pan already, I have shallot, onion, and garlic with some butter, and then we've got some garlic scapes. Those are gonna be awesome. Some frozen bell peppers from the garden, also a little bit of frozen cauliflower. Let's get this added in. I think this is a ghost pepper. We already one of these. We want it hot, but we don't want to like kill ourselves out here. Oops. Okay. There's a little wire in there. In go our curry spices. We didn't have everything, but what I did have was turmeric. We have some coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, and ginger powder in there. So you can add a lot of that in. Being that we didn't bring bowls or plates, we are gonna eat this out of the cast iron skillet, but everything's extremely hot. So I'm gonna put the rice on top of here because I need this for boiling water for coffee. And we're gonna put it outside and see if we can eat this relatively soon. We're getting pretty hungry. Okay, here we go. Oh, do you want a spoon? Yeah, that's a little barbaric, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna go eat with that. I'm hungry. Delicious. Well, we're gonna run the diesel heater tonight. We don't really need to. We have plenty of firewood to get us through the night and the birch is working awesome in the wood stove. So it's nice and toasty in there. But I kind of want to test this thing out and see how it does in like extreme cold. So I made a couple of adjustments here. One of them is I got uh, some more ducting for it. The ducting I had was only about three feet long. And believe it or not, this is eight feet. So this stretches out. I'm gonna try to run it underneath the tent and then through the door. We'll see how that works. And then I also added this cool little gauge right here. And this is a battery voltage gauge. So it's gonna tell me how full or low our battery is. So let's get the battery hooked up and see where we're sitting at. We should be at 12.6. 12.6, perfect. So we got a full charge. Let's put it on level four. Let's get it strung into the tent. Well, it took about three minutes and this time it is putting out some extremely hot air. Like I can barely put my hand there. I think I'm gonna wrap this in something like a rag or something because I don't want it to burn the tent. It's it's really hot, a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be for how cold it is. It's one degrees outside right now and I got it on level four. We're gonna see, we might not have to run the wood stove tonight. This might keep it uh, plenty of warm in here for us. And I'm also wanting to test it because I want to see how long that battery's gonna last uh, running it on level four like this, but this is awesome. Well, we're trying to get this thing to run as good as possible. And so far it's running really nice inside. It says 12.2 volts on the battery. 12.6 is full. So 12.2 is down quite a bit. We've only had it going for about a half an hour. It's not actually at 12.2 since there's a load on it. It's uh, making it go down a little. So it's probably a little higher than that. But what I'm gonna try to do is keep the battery warmer. We've had this battery inside the tent the whole entire time. So it's been pretty warm. I'm gonna stick it inside this tote here and the exhaust right here coming out of the back of the diesel heater. Hopefully it'll keep it a little bit warmer in there and it'll perform a little bit better for us. I think the diesel heater will actually shut itself off if the battery gets to 10.5 volts. So hopefully that doesn't happen in the middle of the night and we'll have to start a fire again, but we'll see how things go. Good morning. We slept awesome last night. The diesel heater was on level three and it kept the temp at like a perfect ambient temperature and Eric only tended to the fire maybe once or twice. So it was just, it was really awesome. We didn't have to tend to that too much. And we switched back to the, the old style. Bo was with me and 
bandit was actually on his bed on the floor. Now he's up here. We're gonna have some strong coffee and make some breakfast and then we have to get packed up. Well, it looks like Arrow packed us just enough wood that's all we have left so it was a perfect trip and the diesel heater I'm gonna say I was pretty impressed with it like Errol said it kept it just a really good constant temperature in the tent last night it used under a gallon of gas probably like a half gallon to three quarters of a gallon and battery wise uh, now it is at 12.0 so I'm pretty confident that that thing could go for maybe like 30 hours on level three we turned it on at 7 at night and it went till about 8 30 in the morning so 13 and a half hours pretty good all right get in there bro stay warm a lot easier to do if I remember my leather gloves, but I didn't bring them. Getting ready to disassemble the wood stove and the tent. I'm really impressed with this thing. It did awesome this trip. The changes we made to it this time around was we have this pad down here, this mat, and this is meant for welding. So if you're like welding something, you can cover it with this and the sparks won't melt through it. That worked great. And then we also have a piece of plywood that I cut that just fits the stove and that kind of keeps it flat and then keeps too much heat from getting underneath it so all in all i think it was a major success with the wood stove this time now we just got to figure how to get it down without my gloves we got it Woo! yeah Well, that about does it. Uh, awesome snow machine ride. It might be the last of the season for us and an awesome camping trip in the new tent. And the dogs are cold. We're ready to head out of here. Say hello to my little friends. 